No, it's well, like, I'm going to give you money. I'm going to give it to you. If I'm not, I'm not going to do it from a phone call. Well, and that's what Grand Central is all designed for, right? Grand Central is the Google uh, application that gives you can give people a number that forwards to whatever you can set it on the web what number it's going to go to, and uh, but you don't have to give them your number, and, and it, it hasn't a, been killed by Google yet. Speaking of a cell phone service, AT and T, the CEO of AT and T has laid out some plans to improve 3G coverage this year. Uh, so apparently, the company is going to be extending 3G to more. They're going to put up some US. more antennas. Okay, I don't know, whatever that means. Improve existing coverage, ramp up data speeds. Uh, AT&T is going to complete the 850 megahertz 3G rollout in San Francisco this year in parts of New York. Alex, translate that. Um, what does that mean? Should we it care? means that they used to have it set to 10, and now they're going to turn it up to 11. <laughs> that scares like, to 11? <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 the engineer walked up there and said, whoa, this does go to 11, and we'll just turn it up a little bit. No, I mean, it's, they're going to do the best they can to increase penetration. I mean, number, there, there's two problems that AT&T has. One is that they, uh, that they don't have enough coverage, and two is the coverage isn't very fast. And so the first one it sounds like that they're going to handle is making sure that you don't end up on edge as soon as you get out of an urban area. Because right now that's what happens. You end up very quickly moving to an edge network. Uh, uh, it just switches over to edge when, uh, at least on my iPhone, uh, switches over to edge pretty quickly if it, if it can't find a, a good 3G network. Um, the, uh, so that's the real challenge that AT&T has first. The second challenge is to live up to the possibilities of 3G, which is you, know, you go to Japan and you open a 3G connection, and it is as fast as your DSL is in the United States. I mean, that's what you're getting on your phone. So what would you be able to do with, with, if 3G rolls out? And what can you do with your DSL? Be- you can download shows. You can watch. You know, the thing is, is that the reason people watch TV on their on their phone in Japan is because they have, you know, a really fast connection. Because right, I mean, it works, they're able to. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're able to actually see, uh, you know, everything, and it actually starts when they hit play, and the, you know, all those little things. Especially for a little screen. You know, one of the things about it is, is that the little screen is a uh, it makes it kind of constrains the size of the video, so it's going to start playing immediately. You know, and that, that works really well in Japan, not so much here. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll keep our eyes on that. We know that 3G is something that consumers want. More, can, I, can I say one thing about Ralph De La Vega? Yes, he's the at and CEO. He's been at at and since I was in high school, and I'm old. I mean, I don't, I don't know how old that press photo is of him on the site, but he, he's been there a long time. I think Are, it's is, very... Is, is, is having a hard time keeping up? Is that what you're saying? No, I just was shocked when I saw that he started at AT&T in 1974. We, are, we don't have a AT&T comment. at and has a lot of lifers. A lot of lifers. And that, and that uh, could be the problem, right? He was also the guy that allegedly spilled beans about Dell coming out with some kind of a new Apple. iPhone. Well, he spilled, didn't he spill the beans about the new iPhone, I think? I think, I think was. it was the, that Dell coming out with an iPhone. That was what he spilled. Maybe he spilled the beans in multiple times. But uh, I, was left, I was left very unsettled by the announcement that they made about the up, you know, making a faster 3G because I wanted to know dates, locations. I wanted to really understand what their roadmap was. And I was very dissatisfied. Like, great. It's a PR thing for me that you say you're going to make your 3G fit. Fa- Make your 3D faster because give me some specifics and you can't good find point. that anywhere. That's just PR to me at this point. That's a really good point. Show so, me the okay, bandwidth. so we don't believe you, Ralph, I and don't uh, don't believe you're him. an old white guy. <laughs> so he's he's actually, that, that, that's, that's what we're left with here. He's <laughs> actually Hispanic. I, oh, wow. Shame on me. Can we delete a lot for the Hispanic community, apparently, which is good. That's what we're left with. This is the high end conversation that you will find here. <laughs> there you go. We're just dissing on people. Uh, so Netflix, more more innovation from Netflix, which is you know one of my favorite companies. Your boyfriend. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so Netflix <laughs> is apparently going to offer a subscription option for on demand streaming videos by 2010. So you won't have to, under this plan, just be a member of the uh, be a subscriber for the Netflix DVD by mail program you just entirely isn't that a great development I mean that's really really smart it's inevitable you have to do that I mean I I think that this is and uh, Susan I said this on your show I've said it here before but I mean I think that Netflix is the company to watch this is a company that's anticipating consumer behavior and is making changes in advance of consumer behavior and uh, I mean and you look at Netflix versus Blockbuster you know two companies that let's say you know three or four years ago were really competitive and and they're really not right now because Netflix did it faster and better and sooner and figured out where consumers were going and is, is continuing 
to evolve based on that. So There were a couple things that I thought were interesting about the Netflix announcement that Reed made. The first one was that, that they're going to have a bifurcated service, obviously. But the second was, I, I'll be fascinated to watch who... Who rolls into Netflix first? Is it going to be HBO? Is it going to be Showtime? They've gotten stars. Stars will do anything. They're, you know, a tertiary player. I mean, <laughs> they, they can afford to take risks because they need to eat up as much market as they can being innovative. But HBO and Showtime, that's the stuff you, they are going to really want and the studios. And, of course, they're all going to wait to see who falls first. And Reed even said in that, that Bloomberg interview that he essentially has to sell a whole bunch more uh, DVD subscriptions, mail, you know, by mail DVD subscriptions to fund the war chest that it's going to take to do the deals to get the on demand streaming content from those from those players, from those producers. So I think it'll be fun to see who falls first, who follows, what what the deals might look like. Very should we interesting. Take, should we place bets? Ooh. I'm going to say Showtime among the pay mm-hmm. providers. Showtime among the pay providers. Showtime's been pretty Very innovative. aggressive. I mean, Showtime yeah. offers well, but, some full episodes on YouTube. But, but, I mean, Showtime really, got on iTunes really, first, isn't, isn't Netflix really making the deals with... Uh, isn't this really happening between Netflix and the movie distributors? They're not really going right, through... Both. TV show- shows too. Television and movies. The yeah. television oh, okay. is a big part of their business. The television series on DVD. I guess, but we I mean... watch I a lot of 30 Rock of, via Netflix. Yeah. Because okay. you don't want to buy the discs... Well, I'm things so like cheap. Lost, your favorite show and mine, uh, you know, you can't wait a week to watch that or you'll never know. You can't remember and keep up. If oh, no, I don't. You know, you have to watch I don't even think about serial. it. I started, I started watching 24 and then and, and I got to about uh, the third or fourth episode and I was like, I'm just going to wait until the end of the season. I just can't. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. I can't remember week. Well, it's not week. even that. It's just. It's just the mental pain of of at the end, just going. Oh, I got to find out what happened, and then I realize I just can't hit fast forward. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, heck with that. So you're good at uh, you're good at delaying uh, gratification. I thought this was kind of a fun story in the New York Times, and then we're going to go to some listener questions that were sent to me in advance. We're going to talk about video spokesperson. You wanted to just chat about that. Yeah. Interesting story in the New York Times. Two British scientists have recently suggested that spending all day in front of social networking might be bad for your body and your brain. <laughs> well, I'm shocked. I gotta no. tell you, this is one of the studies that shocks me. But here's what's this funny about like, it. Social networking no, wait, wait. This is, is, this is like saying This is like saying, this is, sorry, but, is bad for this you. Is like, yeah, no, 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 yeah, this is like frogs jump. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. I, w- I want to say no. <laughs> no no S, Sherlock. Okay, but here's what's funny about it. Okay, what, they, what these researchers say is that uh, social networking sites remind her, this is the researcher, of the way that small babies need constant reassurance that they exist. Because apparently that's what social networking does for us. You know, Twittering and Facebook and, and you, know, you Twitter something, you get the response. It's the same thing that babies need, that technologies are having that effect with. The, the, right so the idea is that they're making us all little babies. Yeah, we're all babies again. Twitter is turning us into. Well, it is. There is a little bit of a, a high school mentality, right? With social networking, is oh, you follow me. If I, if I follow you, you follow me, and boom. Why didn't you respond to my Twitter? Why didn't you respond to my Facebook message? Because like, I'm trying to have a life and run a business. You know, I don't. I don't get that much of that. I don't have a lot of people complaining. About my, you know, you. It might also be because you you're better at filtering out when people don't. (laughs) People say things that uh, like, "Oh, Alex didn't do this." I don't care. Like, I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you didn't like my Twitter. I didn't care if you said this or that. Because I'm still affected by it. Uh, Susan, video spokespersons. Mm. This is something you've been wanting to talk about. And this is video spokespersons for websites. Kind of give a quick explanation of what that is, and let's talk about whether we like them or not, and why you do. All right. Uh, I just had this experience about a week ago. I flew down to Orange County, and I went to a company called Innovate Media. They have this thing called iAds, and they're the video spokespeople that come out on the computer screen. Usually, they walk out full body, and then they kind of shrink to waist up and roll at the bottom of the page. And uh, I'm fascinated. First of all, I like video on sites. I like it in an out-of-the-box experience. I think that the video spokespeople bring a humanity to the content page, to the text experience, that although it still feels very rudimentary, you know, they're coming out and they're saying their little spiel, it would be really great if they had different things they said depending on where you are. I didn't do anything too complex. But uh, for the most part, I think that The idea of video is fabulous. The idea of getting it out of the box and humanizing the content experience is a direction that 
we're going. And I Googled video spokespersons after I had an opportunity to record these screen screen characters for my website. And there are probably 20 companies in that space right now. I had no idea there were so many. So I think we're on the cusp. Is one. Yeah, there's so many. Um, I think we're on the cusp of a kind well, of an explosion here's, 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 of these people. Here's the question I have is yeah. that, is that what makes their service different than – people have been doing that for a while. People have been putting video people on the web, sure. you know, keyed people in front of their yes. web page for a long time. So what yeah. sets this service apart? Well, I, you know, I, I'm not sure. I haven't studied all of them. I'm only familiar with the mm-hmm. with IADS because I was introduced to it by um, the Mad Ave Journal, friends, Tim and Winnie McHale. You, you probably read Madison Avenue Journal. That's in the marketing space, and they introduced me to them. But what they do is uh, they have a an ads – 